Testing, testing, testing.
I'm ready. All right. Well, hello. Good evening. It's good to see you tonight. We thank you for uh, coming and being with us on our Wednesday night Bible study and prayer service. And uh, we always do our, since we've uh, gone where we're on the YouTube and the Facebook where we do the Bible study first and then the prayer and 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 and, and time like that, the last half of the service. So, uh, but we just want to say before we get into our Bible study tonight that uh, do not forget, uh, you know, this is important on uh, this month uh, of, of this Lottie Moon, I mean, not of Lottie Moon, but the Janie Chapman uh, offering for South Carolina missions. Uh, let me encourage you to get one of these envelopes or either get an envelope of any kind or see Rhonda, she'll get you one. And uh, uh, we got to get that 3,000 go. We don't want to wait to the last minute to do that. Uh, so uh, pick you up one and uh, let's, let's fill that thing up next Sunday when we come here and uh, get this, this offering uh, behind us and go above that goal and uh, do what God's told us to do. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you, God, that we can come together. I thank you for these folks, Lord, that uh, they didn't have to be here tonight. But, God, they chose to um, leave whatever they were doing to come into your house to, to meet and to fellowship with one another and to pray together. And, God, I think we're, we're at a time in um, the history of our world that other people have never been in that, God, we're witnessing things that other people have not witnessed. I think there are many signs of the end as we'll be teaching on Daniel on Sunday night uh, into the book Sunday night, introduction times over again. And, uh, God, we're going to prove that what Solomon said, that there's nothing new under the sun, that, that God, there is nothing new under the sun. Father, we thank you, dear God, for this time we live in, for the opportunity to witness to those that do not know you. God, as I was talking to one of our members on the phone this afternoon, and she told me, she said, her biggest burden is, she said, I believe that, that God, that we're, we're near the end, and we are near the end, and so many people do not know Jesus. And I love to hear a church member say something like that. That blessed my heart. God, I pray for those that are not saved. I pray, God, that through some preacher, some friend, somebody in the family, that, God, they'll realize that there's only so much time and so many more chances. And, God, that they would come to know you. God, we pray for our sick tonight, and we'll go over them in a little bit. But, Father, we pray for those that are in the need of prayer and God, we pray for healing for them. If it's your will, God, to, to heal them, God, we really pray that, uh, Lord, you might touch their bodies, raise them up. God, I pray for all the folks that are working, the doctors, the nurses, the, the, the first responders, and all the people, God, that are, are helping us get through this, this time that we're in. God, I want to thank you for the faithfulness of the folks here at Southside. I thank you for those that, that listen to us uh, through the Facebook and, and the YouTube. God, those that have responded, those that have given to support the ministry from, from many different places. And God, we, we thank you for that. And Lord, we've been blessed. And we pray, God, that what we do will be a blessing to those that are not here. We miss our folks that are regularly here, God, and we pray you bless them tonight as they're watching. God, now we may we take your word as we look at the life and a Christian walk of one of the greatest Christians in the Bible and see what he had to go through and how much, in many ways, his life was like all of ours. To prove that God, even in a hostile world, that God, we can still live for you. For it's in Christ's name that we do humbly pray. Amen. When we stopped talking about Paul last Wednesday night, he had gone to the church, the temple uh, there at uh, Antioch, uh, to to preach. This is not uh, this is Antioch of Poseidon, and we finished up last week in verse forty-one. 
And one thing I mentioned to you that we did, do not need to forget. I mentioned to you last week that as Paul stood it, remember Paul, when he would go, to, and I'll, Nick, as we get a little further in the study, you'll see something a little different. It always is like that. Um, when Paul would go to a town, he would go to the synagogue, and he would always preach to the Jews first, and anybody else that might would happen to be in there. Well, in this particular, every congregation is different, just as every preacher's different. God didn't make us all the same. God didn't give us all the same people to preach to. But in this congregation particularly, they were made up of three kinds of people. They were the Jewish that were born Jews, raised Jews, children of Abraham, keepers of the law. And then you had what was the second group of people that was in there with them, what were called the proselytes. Now, the proselytes were people that used to be Gentile. And they had got converted to the Jewish religion. They had listened to the priests and the scribes and all. And so they had left the Gentile, unbelieving pagan, and had become Jewish believers. And then the third group that you had in that congregation were the Gentiles. These were pagans. These uh, were many that had not converted to any religion, had not accepted any religion, had probably most of them not been preached to in their life, so they didn't know the Bible, they didn't know Scripture, they didn't know about Jesus, they didn't know much about anything. And so those are the three people, and, and this comes into play now. Those are the three groups of people that Paul is speaking. Now, a lot of times I get not fussed at, but made fun of, because why? I might preach a little bit long sometimes, right? Not, don't shake your head yes when I say that. What's the matter with you? <laughs> now, since we've been doing this stuff live and all, it's been, I ain't been going as long as I usually go, so y'all need to be happy about this. I'm going to pretty soon think I'm a Methodist if I stay here very long and I keep preaching these little short sermons. But I shouldn't say that. That's live, ain't it? Ain't no way we can cut that out, is it? Oh, my goodness. So that's the trouble. I get myself in trouble doing live stuff. But anyhow, forgive me, Methodist. And... Uh, but anyway, let's look at the last verse that we looked at when we quit last week, verse 41 in chapter 13. Paul is preaching. In the previous verse, he tells him, you better beware of what you listen to. He says, beware lest they come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Now, who is he talking about? The false preachers, the false prophets. He said, you need to be aware that everybody that says they're preaching and everybody that, that everybody's not preaching truth. And so I want to make you aware. Now, you got to remember, you got the scribes and the Pharisees and all these leaders there that are sitting there. And I can tell you right now, they're getting antsy with what's going on because he's talking to them. He says, a new day coming. The cross made a difference. The cross changed things. The cross changed the message. It was the cross. And he says, Behold, you despisers and wonders and perish. Now, who were despisers? The priests, the scribes, the Pharisees. They did not, they could not stand Paul. Why? Because he said that doctrine they were preaching wasn't needed anymore. Same way they hated John the Baptist and cut his head off. And the same way eventually they would kill Paul. Same way they put Jesus on the cross. And now Paul is calling them out for doing this. He said, but I look what, like what Paul says. He said, but I'm going to work a work in your days. He, he, in other words, what he's saying is what? I'm not changing the message. The message stays the same in your day, in a year down the road or two years down the road, however long God's got me to preach, 
He said the message will not change no matter who sits in the congregation out there. He says, for I work a work in your day, a work which you shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. What's he saying? Y'all not going to like the message I'm going to preach, and y'all are not going to believe the message I'm going to preach. You will hear it, but you will not believe it. Now, you don't want to miss Sunday night. We had one of the biggest crowds Sunday night we ever had, much bigger than Sunday morning was, much bigger. And we started the book of Daniel, and you thought that was something Sunday night. You'd be here this Sunday night because we could blow the roof off this place this Sunday night. And I'm just telling you, and the title of the message is this, and it ties in with what Paul, the title of Sunday night's message is we start verse by verse in Daniel is, why don't you listen? Why don't you listen? If you listened, you would know why, what's going on in the world today. Why don't you read God's got it in his word? And I'll be explaining it to you. That'll be Sunday night. You don't want to miss that. Not Sunday night. Now, let's get on the new stuff. Now, when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, as you know, as the old saying, mad as a, 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 a wet set him. Them jokers were, they'd heard that message and he, he had called them out. He had called their preaching out. He had called their worship out. He had called their, their, their thinking, their, their saying that the laws could save you. He had, he had just negated all of that in his message. So when they walked out of the church, son, these jokers are mad. They're mad. And the Jews, you know, most time the mad people is going to be the first ones out of the church. They don't want to see nobody. They don't want to speak to nobody. They're so mad they just want to get to the car and leave. You can make them that mad sometimes. And most of the time they don't come back. If they ever get that mad, they're gone. And these are the first ones out. Then the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. But now there's another group in there. that They have not been persuaded in any belief, in any doctrine, in anything. Gentiles. Who were the Gentiles? Me and you. We're Gentiles. They had not accepted the Jewish religion. They had not accepted any religion, but I'll tell you what they did like. They liked what they heard. They liked the message that they heard. Now, you know what was the difference in the message they heard and the message they'd been here and going there? There's a difference in the messages now. The message that they'd heard before that day when they went in that church was what? Keep the law. Keep the Ten Commandments. Be obedient to those commandments. That was what was taught and preached by the scribes and the Pharisees. Do the commandments. You remember when the young man came to Jesus and he told Jesus what? I have kept all the commandments from the days of my youth. Remember when he told him that? But he died and he went to hell. And so the difference in the message is this. They taught, if you believed in Jehovah God and you kept the law and you were a good Jew, then you were going to go to heaven. And then Paul comes in with his message of what? Grace. Totally different message. God, his message was what? None of you in here can keep the law. God never made but one man that could keep the law, and his name was Jesus. God never made but one man that could not sin. His name was Jesus. So there's nobody in here that can do what these men require of you to do. There's no man in here that can keep the law. There's only been one man that's been perfect, and his name's Jesus. Everybody else gets perfect by God's grace, by God's forgiveness. Where sin did abound, what did much more abound? Grace, that's right. So they're getting two different messages now. Now the thing about it is this. 
They like the second message better than they like the first message. Now the Jews went flying out the door just to, in a in a in a hissy fit about what Paul had said. And then the Gentiles gathered and said, I like the way that man preached. Gage, you like that message he gave? He told us something we never heard before. He told us that we could be a sinner saved by grace and that there was a God up there that loved us and that had died for us on an old rugged cross and would forgive us of our sins. That was Paul's message. And you know what? They liked it. They liked it so much to what? They said, let's ask him back again. A good sign they don't like you preaching, you don't never ask you back again. That's a good sign. They, hey, Brother Lynn, if you upset the wrong people in the church, you know, you and see, if you go off preaching somewhere, like Brother Lynn and I have done over the years to revivals and different things, you don't know who's to who, who. See, most of the time in a church, everybody's got a Mr. So-and-so just a big shot in the church, right? It don't matter who he is, you do what Mr. Big Shot says. He gives the most money, so he makes the rules and, and everybody in the church. Anytime they need anything, they always look to him, right? Well, <clears throat> if I go preaching there, I don't know who Mr. Big Shot is. So I just preach. Now, Mr. Big Shot, probably if he don't like the sermons I preach, the odds of me getting back there preaching again are what? None. That's right. Even though everybody else may like it, if the wrong man don't like it, you ain't coming back. They said, we need to get him back. I like him. I like the message that he preached. He didn't. You see, their problem was this that they were looked, on, looked down on by the Jewish people and believed not to be as good as the Jewish people were because they weren't of the Jewish religion. So the Jewish people looked down on them. Now, folks, if you love the Lord, that ain't right. God said he loves everybody. You don't look down. You, you're not holier than thou. You're not, you know, it's, it's real easy, you know. Uh, uh, you know, I, I said something about Methodist, but there's nothing wrong with that. I, I, you know, I got plenty of my kin folks that go to the Methodist church, and, and that, that's okay. My sister and those used to go there. And, uh, but if we're not careful because we'll get a holier than thou attitude, and we'll have a tendency to look down on somebody when well, you need to realize that everybody in the world is nobody but a sinner saved by grace or a sinner that's not saved by grace. That's the only two categories you fall in. They said, we like him. We like his message. We like the way he preaches. We like the things that he says. Now, the thing about this is these people don't run the church. <laughs> Who runs the church? The Jewish people do. Matter of fact, they went to church. They couldn't sit with them. They, they, had, they had a different area in the church city, and they couldn't sit with the regular Jewish people. They had what they call a place for the Gentiles to sit at. They had a place over there for the women to sit at, you know, uh, you, you couldn't sit together and come together to worship. So it really wasn't up to them because it was not their church. It was not they. They were almost like visitors themselves and said, we need to go talk to somebody and get him back and let him preach again. So when the congregation was broken up, listen to what happened. Many of the Jews and the religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas. Now, I know I take a long time, but I read a lot of stuff in each word. 
They, I don't know if anybody reads more stuff in each word in the Bible than I do. After the church was over, you know how you get in the parking lot before we had COVID and we used to hug and talk and do all that stuff. But it says that many, folks, even a lot of the Jewish people liked what they'd heard. They never heard about Jesus before. They never heard about grace before. They'd never been told that, that uh, there was a Savior out there. We're talking about Jews now. We're talking about those, the, 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 the people that believed in the commandments, That's, you know, that were up with the, 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 the scribes and the Pharisees and all. Many of them, not only were the Gentiles excited, folks, when you could get the Jews excited about a message. Now, don't, let, let's throw a little something extra here. Do you not think that God knew what he was doing when he saved Paul on that Damascus road and sent him out there to preach that message that there was probably no other man in the world could do what he was doing right now and could stir those people up like Paul could stir them up? He knew what he was doing when he put Paul there. He said, this is the man. And the Jews and the religious proselytes, the Jews... And the Gentiles that had been converted to Judaism, that believed in the Ten Commandments, they joined in with what? Those folks and said what? They followed Paul and Barnabas. Now, the danger with that is this. If they follow Paul... And Barnabas, then you're going to have to leave somebody else to follow somebody else, right? If you follow in this group, but all of a sudden somebody comes up in this group you like, and you decide you want to follow them and break away from them, then what's going to happen to them? They're going to get mad. Why? Because you don't got their church members. You got them coming to your church instead of going to the church they was going to. That's what happens. That's, that's what happened here. These people, the Jews, the proselytes, the Gentiles, the church full of people all of a sudden said, we want them back to preach. We're going to follow. The Bible says that they started, they left the priests and the scribes and started following Paul and Barnabas. Now, do you think that set well with the Jewish leadership in the Jewish church that half of their congregations walked out following two men that had just come into town, just preached one sermon? That's the first and only time they've seen him. And all of a sudden, they became so enthralled with the message that he brought that they decided to leave their church and to follow him. He, Paul, that's what I'm telling you. When you look at the life of Paul, what a man and for a preacher, what, what it is to, to speak in about. Who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. You know why they liked him? I would imagine that Paul was a pretty good preacher. You know, old preachers used to say when preachers could really preach, well, you know, I brought Brother Eddie Ski. Y'all remember him and his wife, Miss Phyllis, died. Uh, Mr. Mr. Ski, this is what he'd always say. Boy, he shook the corn today. That's what they say the old time. Boy, he shook the corn today. Mm-hmm. He said, if he didn't get, what he, oh, Eddie, he said, if he didn't get that, 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 that you know, your wood's too wet. I'm telling you right now. But they didn't say so much about liking him as they did the message. It was the message. And what was the message? Grace. They never heard of such a thing. Grace? What is grace? We don't even know what you're talking about. So, you know, to understand God and to follow God, and to be what God wants you to be, you have to grow in the Lord. The Bible says that we have to have 
that he put us here and he wants us just like a child that goes to school to learn, to grow up, to be whatever. We as children of God, the Bible says we start out as babes in Christ, but we've got to grow up. Now, they're just learning something they never heard before. Brother Lynn, one of the things that thrills me, and, and I don't get to do it as much as I'd like to do it. Didn't even have it this year, the preaching conference down there where they have all them really good preachers at down there. You know, they from everywhere, and they, them things can preach the stars down. I'm telling you, if you just sit and listen to them jokers preach, and every once in a while... They'll say something, and I'll say. And I'll look at them people with me, and I'll say, can you believe that? I never heard that. I didn't know that. And it'll just hit me. It'll hit me. I heard a, I was down there a few years ago, uh, Dr. Herb Revis that, that preaches at North Jacksonville Baptist Church, a huge church down in Florida. He said, I'm going to preach y'all an unusual sermon today. And I'm thinking, now Herb's on fire. Now he's going to run up and down in steps. And he's going to be all around that thing. He's going to be jumping around and hollering and screaming and going on. And, uh, but I'm, I'm just telling you, uh, I've got a CD of me. Now I'll let y'all listen to it one time. But he come out that day and he said, I'm going to preach on something you ain't going to hear much in the Baptist churches no more. And I said, uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, I like this now. And he got on drinking. And he got on alcohol. And I never will forget what he said. He said, for all these years, we used to fuss and point our finger at that denomination and at that denomination and at that denomination because they told everybody it was all right. But he, and this is about six or seven years ago, he said this. He said, but you mark it down. It ain't going to be long before the Baptist church and the Baptist preachers are going to be okay with it and our churches are going to be full of it. I said, we Baptists ain't going to never let that happen. What a joke that was. If that was ever a prophetic message, that was a prophetic message. You wait till you hear Sunday night's message. I'm going to tell you about that. People that, do, that says the Bible don't say nothing about drinking, you tell them to tune in Sunday night. My granddaddy, when I was a little boy, and we worked on the farm, my, my granddaddy, Brother Jimmy, he'd go to the liquor store and get him something happened through the day. And I was a little fellow. I'd walk in there with him. I remember one day we went in there <laughs> and that fellow that owned the liquor store said, I'll tell you one thing, Mr. Holly. He said, if it wasn't for you Baptists, I'd have to shut this place down. <laughs> he said, we talk about all them other people. He said, 90% of my business company, you Baptists. Y'all sneak in here and try to sneak out where nobody don't see you. And now we get to the point where we don't even call it out no more. We don't even talk about it no more. You know why? Because everybody's doing it and everybody's accepting it and the, and, and the world's come so much into the church and we feel like we got to have church members to will accept anything they want to do now as long as they'll come fill up a place in the pew. And we won't ever tell them that the Bible says it's wrong. That ain't got nothing to do with this here. I just thought I'd tell you that. All you out there that's sipping a cool one, you need to put that sucker down. You see, I'm, I'm the old, I'm at a point, it don't matter what you think of me. <laughs> it don't really matter. You know, you know what I mean? There might have been a time, Brother Lee, when it mattered, it don't really matter now. The truth, the truth, that's right. Truth will set you free. So I explain, some of you need to listen. Some of you out there right now need to listen. Might be some in here need to listen. I don't know. But anyway, I ain't done but two verses tonight. I'm going to quit studying. I'm going to take three weeks off. I'm so far ahead on this. But it was the message of grace. It was not the man. Folks, if you ever get to where it's the man, you're there for the wrong reason. 
I hear people say, well, they follow him there because of him. They follow him there. No, no. Nobody needs to follow me or Mother Lynn or anybody. But I tell you what, you need to go where there's a message preached. You need to be where there is life, where the Holy Spirit of God is moving in the church, where there's something going on, where when you walk out the door, you feel a little better than when you come in, right? You feel like you're being in the presence of the Lord when you get there. That's what you need to do when you go to church. And now we've become so dead in our churches. All we want 15-minute sermons, go out there and get out of here and go and do what we want to do instead of standing there and preaching the truth, Brother Tom. He said we like the message of grace. I like it too. I've told you a thousand times my favorite verses of Scripture in the Bible. We're seeing it about grace. The unmerited love of God. Do I deserve grace? Do I deserve for God to, you know, if I got what I deserved, I'd be dead today. If I got what I deserved, I'd be in hell today. But thank God I'm not going. When, when, like that song that, that, that Martha Cribb sings it sometime, and I, I listen to it coming here tonight. When he was on the cross, I, 2,000 years down the road, I, you were on his mind. He said, if you'll come by my grace and my blood, I'll accept. Hey, I like that message too. I like the message. I, I don't tell you this story, but I had a friend of mine was a, a teacher down at New Orleans Theological Seminary. I never well, I went to meet him one day. At his house, he, his sister lived up in Kershaw, and, and he'd come there, and, and I went to see him, and he taught. He had a little church out, outside there, and he taught at the school, and I never will forget, and I got a message that wrote somewhere, and this is what he, all, he told me. And I got, the older I get, Brother Lynn, the more I get to thinking about this. That's why I'm talking about it so much. He said, Jimmy, let me tell you what's going to happen in the church. They're going to quit preaching about the cross. He says, the longer it goes, they go, get way out there about all stuff and they go quit preaching about the blood and they go quit preaching about grace and mercy and they go quit preaching and they go just tickle ears. He said, the thing that scares me most about the church and he's a teacher at one of our seminaries is we're raising up a bunch of preachers that one day will quit preaching about the cross. And when you quit preaching about the cross, you might as well cut the lights out, turn the sign off, Go home and don't worry about coming because nothing else matters but the cross anymore. Mm. They wanted him to continue preaching on grace. He said, we don't want to hear about that drinking and, and fornicating and all this. And we want to hear something about grace. The Bible says, as all of you were, at one time sinners. So you don't have to write. And then the next day, the next Sabbath day, they came almost the whole now how would you like this? This would be the most wonderful thing. It'll never happen, but it'd be a wonderful thing. Who showed up at church next Sunday? The whole city. Word got out. What? There's a man down there that preached last Sunday, preached something like we ain't never heard before. Y'all need to go hear the message of grace. Y'all need to go hear this, that God loves you, and if you don't get saved, you can't go to heaven. And that's the message he's preaching. And you know what happened almost like Jonah uh, when he went there and he preached and the whole city came and got saved. Man, next Sunday, it was standing room only. They couldn't put them all in the church. They couldn't see them all. It, they didn't have COVID. I don't know what they'd have done if they'd have had COVID. They'd have had to spread them out in the woods around the church and put a loudspeaker on the church. The whole city showed up. Now, you know you done preach when you preach and somebody says, you got to go down there tomorrow night and listen to him and the whole city comes. See, what you need, you need the mayor and you need the, the, the councilman and you need the, uh, all the leaders and, uh, you know, and all this stuff that allows all this crazy stuff to go on. They, they need to come too. Oh, 
Lord, not say that lie. Well, one good thing the sheriff lives right down the road from me. I'm a good hand. He's my buddy. The whole city came together for what purpose? And I'll stop there. I did do three verses and I praise the Lord. I ain't got to study again for three weeks. Because I'm already way over here. And I'm just now right here. But let me tell you something. The older I get, the more excited I get. Now, ain't it supposed to be the other way? Brother Ray. Huh? Ain't it supposed to be the older you get, the, the more you're supposed to just chill out and, and just take it easy and just ride it on through to retirement. So that's what a lot of preachers do. They get in them last two or three years and they know they're going to make it, so they just slow down and want to make nobody mad, just want to make it, make it through to them. Till I get that age where I can get that retirement check and get my social security and lay back. So I'm going to just slide through these. But God got me on a different path. God got me on, I, I'm not going to say the wrong path and put me on a different one, but I ain't never been excited about God and what's going on in the world and the things of God. In all my 41 years of preaching, I'm here to tell you right now, I ain't never been excited as I am right now. I told y'all God put me in the wrong time zone, but I believe God's got me in the right time zone. Grace. What's that song? Marvelous grace. Marvelous grace. I'm about to wear Dwight's arm out back there trying to move that camera around. He's going he, 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 he look like he's flagging an airplane back there. I'll move up there and he'll shine that thing and I'll move back here and he'll shine that thing. And he's he trying, trying to keep up with me. He better glad I ain't 40. He, 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 he'd, have, he'd have, what you call that stuff when you wrist mess up? Carpet tongue. That, that, that's what he'd have just trying to follow me around. We got to quit. I'm going to tell you what. I, had a, I was kind of down before I come here tonight. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. Whew, but i tell you what. If ain't nobody had a good time here tonight, Jimmy Holler had a good time. And that's when I come to church to do. Let's have our closing prayer. Thank you for watching us. May God bless you. God loves you. He died on the cross for you. And anybody that believes in the grace and forgiveness of God can be saved and go to heaven. There is no other message, there is no other way than the Lord Jesus Christ. All I said tonight is what? About the message of the cross of Jesus. That's what they like because that they need why? Because they finally realized that was the answer they've been looking for. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the night. God, thank you for grace that saved a wretch like me. That amazing grace that we sing every Sunday morning because I once was lost, but now I found, thank God, was blind, but now I see. And God, I thank you give me sight. And you give me sight to see the wonders. And God, as old as I am, you, you still are growing something there, God, that I, that I didn't know that I had in me. I wish I, I knew I had it, but God, I guess I had to get old to get it. But God, I thank you for it. I pray for our sick tonight. Bless them, God. Thank you for those that watch tonight. May you bless them. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.